Jamie Ammons Madry, 27, of Framingham, was found stabbed to death in her home. Her boyfriend, Christopher McCoy, 25, was charged with murder in connection with her death. Family feared that Madry was afraid to tell them what was going on because she was afraid of how they might react. Madry Ammons' younger sister described her as the perfect big sister and said no matter how hard life got, she never left my side. Shanique Rolden, 34, of Springfield, was shot to death by Anthony Petito, 51. Petito accused her of lying about the paternity of two of her children. Anthony chased Shanique through city streets and alleyways before fatally shooting her, according to witnesses. Shanique was loved by her family and leaves behind her children, aunt, and several brothers and sisters. Charlie Cook, 44, of North Adams, who was in a coma for five months, succumbed to the injuries she suffered on July 11th after an attack by her husband, Michael Cook. Michael Cook has two decades of arrest records, including a dozen of restraining order violations. Charlie worked as a CNA and enjoyed making people laugh. She loved her dogs and birds, trips to the Florida mountains, and spending time with her family and friends. Carla Rodriguez, age 20, of Framingham, was shot to death by Luis Santos, age 23, of Hudson. They had been dating for approximately three months, and Carla was pregnant. Reports have said that after an argument, Lewis shot Carla through the windshield of a car. Lewis turned himself in and is facing murder charges. Carla was attending Mass Bay Community College and leaves behind her parents, her son, her brother, sister, and many aunts, uncles, and cousins. Sandra El Kumar, or Corfield, 53 of Mashpee, was found dead in an apartment on Center Street in Mashpee after the police were called to the apartment by her partner, Mark Audette. According to the court files, during the emergency call, Mark told the responding dispatcher that he had killed Sandra and injured himself with a sword. When police arrived at the home, they found Sandra suffering from obvious signs of blunt force trauma. Sandra, originally from Martha's Vineyard, is remembered by her mother for her positivity and artistic talent. Maria, the boy, 57 of Wareham, was found fatally stabbed in a residence by first responders. Maria's partner, Danny Sherman, was arrested and ordered held without bail on a single charge of murder. Kathleen McLean, 45 of Dover, was found strangled in an area not far from her home. Kathleen's husband, Ingolf Turek, 58, a doctor, was arrested and charged with killing his wife. Kathleen had a restraining order against her husband, but it was since vacated. Friends described a controlling marriage in which Ing Ingolf abused Kathleen for months. Kathleen worked as a Reiki master and teacher. A close friend described her as one of the most amazing people and said that she spent her days healing and helping people. Kathleen leaves behind three children and many more family and friends. Amber Pereira, 30, of Somerset, was shot to death by her estranged husband, Joshua Pereira, 31. Police arrived to the house to find the two dead of apparent gunshot wounds. A gun was underneath Joshua in what the Bristol County District Attorney's Office described as an apparent murder-suicide. Officials said Joshua had recently moved out of the home after the couple separated, but had driven back to the residence sometime that morning. Family described Amber as having an infectious smile that brought joy to everyone around her. She loved her job with the De Massachusetts Department of Corrections, and more importantly, she loved the people she worked with. Migdalia Perez, 47, of Gardner, was shot to death by her partner, Jose Muniz Badillo, 49, outside of her home in an apparent murder-suicide. Neighbors reported hearing an argument just before the shooting. Police were called and found the couple outside Migdalia's apartment in the hallway. They were both pronounced dead at the scene. Two days before her murder, Migdalia tried to obtain a permanent restraining order against Jose, but was denied. 
Migdalia loved to go shopping, dancing, and hosting parties, but what she truly loved and cherished was time spent with her family and children. Megan McNeil of Worcester was shot by her partner, Trey Mahone, before Trey turned the gun on himself. Trey was declared dead at the scene and Megan was rushed to the hospital, where she succumbed to her injuries eight days later. Those close to her say Megan was a dedicated mother to her five-year-old daughter. She was a registered nurse who worked at St. Vincent Hospital and UMass Memorial Medical Center in Worcester and was a caregiver in every aspect of her life. As noted in her obituary, even as she passed, Megan continued to be a caregiver as her participation as an organ donor brought the precious gift of life to recipients and their families. This flame represents the flame of truth. It shines in spite of those who'd prefer to extinguish it. We light this candle for those who survived. May their courage and strength be honored. We light this candle for those silenced by circumstances and fear. We light this candle for those who choose to speak. We light this candle for those who have chosen to tell their stories despite the denial, disbelief, and minimizing. We light this candle for all those who provide support to the victims and survivors of domestic violence. May their support be blessed. We light this candle in our community. May we continue tonight to unite in the effort to end all forms of violence.